Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today we're getting to a video that I should have gotten to about a week ago. It's one that I promised to do earlier, and it's how to trellis your tomatoes. Now, there are many, many different ways to trellis tomatoes. I, in the past, have looked at my tomatoes and thought about trellising them and just let them sprawl on the ground and still got decent harvests. The only problem with letting them sprawl on the ground was that they did get eaten by bugs quite a bit and they got sunburned. So um, I'm going to try one method that I've learned and that's taking a tomato plant. Now I'll show you how we're gonna do this. We're going to pull off all of the side shoots and let one stem go straight up and tie it to a post. Now I'm going to also link another video that Foodscaping Utah did where they showed how they trellis their tomatoes and they trellis them up strings. So let's get down here and look at my tomatoes and see how they look so far. Here we have the tomato patch that I have up at the top of my hill. And I did also want to give you an update. The front tomatoes, there's one, two, three, these four tomatoes stayed in my house till about Mother's Day under lights and then were planted. This one back here, this one that had the lower leaves burned but is still doing really well, and this one over here were put outside under walls of water. And there's a clear difference. Um, we actually have little tomatoes starting on this one right here. So I think the walls of water did actually make a big difference. So anyway, let's look at how we're going to trellis these tomatoes. So here's this little tomato plant. It is starting to flower. And if you'll look, it's kind of hard to see because of the leaves, but there's one main stem that is getting taller. And then as you look between each of these, you know, each of these leaf nodes, there's little side shoots that we can pull off. Now these side shoots, if you really had more room for tomatoes, you can plant these in the ground or put them in a, you know, in a pot full of soil and they will root and grow an extra tomato. Now I am a little late on this. As you can see, there is a big side shoot right here. It's a little big to be cutting, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to get this done. There's another bigger side shoot. So what I'm going to do is cut this one off here. Cut this one off here. Take those away. There's another side shoot down here. One here, one here. I'm going to snap that one off there. And then take these off. So now I'm going to show you how I am going to tr uh, trellis this tomato plant. Okay, so to trellis this tomato plant, I am going to take my green garden tape and just basically tie it to the pole. Let's show you how, how that'll look. So I pulled off a section of tape. I am going to wrap it. I'm going to wrap it under one leaf, take this around the pole so it's tight, so it doesn't slip, and then tie a knot right here. Let's get you up closer to see what that looks like. So as you can see, it's tied loosely around the plant and then tighter around the pole. And as this tomato plant grows bigger, I will just tie it up the continued length of the pole. So let's get the other tomato plants done and see what it looks like in the end.
So now you can see, oh, I forgot this one. I've got to do this one next. But we have each of these tomato plants tied up. Now that I'm actually done with that, it was a shorter video, let me give you a quick tour of the rest of the garden. First thing I'm going to show you is my potatoes. Now, I just watered these and they got a little smashed, but they're getting really tall. They're looking pretty good. This is how big Lovage actually gets. It's huge. My other potatoes. I'm really excited to see how well they do. This is the first year I've grown potatoes and I'm growing them in my compost bins. Now we did have a ground cherry here that looked like it was gonna start producing fruit, but this area doesn't seem to get the water it needs. So we'll see if it actually even survives. I just watered it and it's still looking pretty bad. Let's look at my cabbages. This one's actually this one's actually getting a good size head. The other ones are heading up really well. Had to take the broccoli out because it was done. And I've been regularly harvesting the kale. It's really been good. And the cloth that I've left on this has kept the temperatures up a little bit in there, but it has also kept the bugs away kept the moisture in a little bit too so I don't have to water this area as much as I have to water other ones. The kohlrabi, Let's see if I can get you a good look at that. It's starting to bulb up, look really good. Peppers, first year, well I used to grow peppers in California but not very often they didn't do very well there either. They're still not looking great here, but they do have a lot of flower buds, so we'll see if we get any harvest off of them. Peas are doing great, but I'm going to be pulling these out shortly so that I can uh, plant cucumbers. But you can see the you can see the number of peas that we're getting. We'll just harvest those until I'm ready to plant cucumbers. This area is starting to get overgrown. I'm going to cut back the chive blossoms because they reseed themselves like crazy and I hate that. So I just cut them back by half and then within another few weeks they are fully flushed back out again. This is the reason I grow cilantro is so that it will flower and set seed and then I use the, cor the seeds and it's called coriander. They also draw in wonderful beneficial bugs. The artichokes down here have not put up any flower heads and they are getting just eaten to death by, I think it's the baby grasshoppers that are eating these. So we'll see if they actually give us anything. These peppers have really been hit hard. I think these are, um, the problem we're having here is earwigs. They've been eating them like crazy. I've actually resorted to spraying these with seven because nothing has helped. The onions are starting to get big. We have lettuce everywhere. It's looking great. And because of this cool spring, they have not bolted yet. But the irregular is bolted and I leave it because as you can see, the pollinators absolutely love them. But I'll be pulling these out shortly so they don't set uh, too many seeds all over the place. It's not going to be too long before we're harvesting garlic. Let me show you the other. This is a ground cherry that we have over here. Um, it seems to be doing better than the one over there in the shade. And we have raspberries. Now I wanted to show you something. Every year for the past three years I've had a serious issue with the raspberries. They get ready to produce fruit and then this right here happens. I don't know if you can see how the end is starting to die, it's starting to curl over and I just figured out last year what it is but I figured it out a little too late. This is a raspberry cane borer. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna go down below this. Maybe you can see kind of where the cane is dying back to. I'm going to cut that 
and then remove it. So there should be a little larva in here. There's probably a little larva in here somewhere that's burrowed its way into the stem and it's going to work its way down to the crown if I don't cut these off. So I'm going to look around for more. Seems like that was the only one with the issues so far. Because I'd really like to have ripe raspberries. Now this one right here, as you can see, this is starting to die and it's starting to curl over. So I'm going to cut that one off preventatively. We'll remove those as garden debris and throw them away. But definitely they're looking a lot better than they have in the past. And we're getting some raspberries that are starting to ripen. It's making me excited. Last of all, we have our strawberries and another ground cherry that seems to be getting eaten a little bit too. Now, I have not gotten a lot of strawberries because I have a dear sister who's moved in with me who loves strawberries and I'm more than happy to let her eat them. One of these days there's going to be enough that I can come out and find some too. Actually, she left some for me, if you can see there. Well, thank you for joining me on this quick garden update and tomato trellising video. I hope you're enjoying your garden. I challenge you to go out there and look at your tomatoes and find a good way to trellis it. And then let me now know down below which method you're using. And go have a wonderful garden adventure.